Okay, so we are now recording. Okay, so assalamu alaikum and good morning, guys. Uh, this is a quick notification. A um, little bit of background first, yeah. When we started the semester, at that time, the beginning of the semester, there was some optimism that we were about to overcome the COVID-19. And the university was already planning to bring back the students to the universities and start, even to start face-to-face -face classes and lab sessions and so on and so forth. And I think you all remember how that felt, that we were about to restart everything back to normal. Again. However, um, after the recent relapses that we had and the third wave and all that stuff, unfortunately, all of that stopped. The implication to that is, is that you won't be able to come to do your, um, your practical or your design or your experiments in the lab. Um, you are not required to, to do any of that at home either. And currently, the university has decided that only critical projects are allowed to come to the lab and do their work. And unfortunately, FYP projects are not critical unless they are linked to other projects which are critical. Um, and in fact, although some of you are linked to some of my projects, but those are not even, or are not critical either. So what are we gonna do uh, in this case? We're gonna do plan B. And plan B is to, to switch your topics or your title into virtual applications, into virtual projects. What does that mean? Virtual simply means is that you can do the whole FIP online or in a virtual form. And then you can submit your FIP work um, as, a, as a simulation or as a virtual work. So you don't actually have to do any kind of physical uh, work and therefore you don't have to come to an actual lab to do it. And I already have the clearance and uh, the green light from the faculty to do so. In fact, it's not only green light, it's recommended. So first thing, so what is that supposed to mean? Or what's the implication to that on your time? The implications are simple. You may have to change your title or adjust your title to go from physical work to virtual work. Um, I know you have two questions. How do you change the title and how am I gonna do the virtual? That's the purpose of today's present, um, briefing. Your title, if you could virtually or turn it into a virtual representation of your work and can develop a virtual um, project or a um, system, then great. You can maintain the same title and on so on and so forth. If you could not, if you, let's say it's not possible, then you may have to retitle and uh, rechange your title. Now, changing to another title is also a problem because that means uh, the work you've done so far, the introduction, the literature review, blah, 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 you may have to redo, unfortunately. And if you're thinking, oh, God, why do I have to do that again? Um, unfortunately for all of us, this is the price to pay for having or not having to come to a lab. Yes, switching to a virtual project is fun because you don't have to go. But um, unfortunately, the price for that is that you may, re you may have to restart. Um, uh, restart means, by the way, what? We are only um, in halfway through the semester, semester one, and you haven't even reached semester two, so it's not much of a restart. And you only did uh, PR1 and PR2. So, and these two are, whatever you wrote so far in PR1 and PR2 will be counted and will be marked. But then we will take note that in time for PR3 and for presentation, the next presentation, there will be changes. Um, so um, we are aware of that and we, we are understanding this. Now, if you could change to a topic that is related to your original topic, therefore, the amount, therefore some of the work you've done can be reused, then we are okay with that either, uh, with that as well. So basically, it's basically up to you to try to adjust to the new environment. Now, right now, if I say virtual one more time, you'll be angry. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you how you can get, a, where you can get a virtual lab. You're gonna have to come to this environment, to this place called thinkcap.com. Basically, it's right here, T-I, 
N K E R C A D. And you will come straight away. Um, I'm already here because I'm already logged in. So let me log out first. So uh, let me start that again. Yeah. So stinkercard.com. This is your virtual lab. So stinkercard.com. Uh, yeah, it's right here. So you can actually, if you are in front of a laptop right now, you can just drop by and check it out. If not, you can come and check it out later. This video is recorded, you can actually watch it later. And uh, basically it's free to use. So once you are here and you're logged in, uh, for me, I'm gonna sign in because I already have an account, but for you, you have to click on join now and you can use your email or, or any method you would like from here, but it's all for free. So I already have an account, so I'm going to go in and log in with my own account, and uh, which is this one right here. And essentially, um, any questions? Oh shoot, I forgot. Let me let me show you my screen. Thank you. So can you see the screen now? Okay, uh, Irfan, if you just joined us, you missed the intro in the background, so don't worry, the video is recorded. You can always go back and watch it later. Uh, I mean, the beginning, the parts that you missed. So now, what I'm gonna show you right now is your virtual lab. And to come to the virtual lab, you have to go to a browser and uh, essentially uh, go to tinkercard.com. And that's the URL you have to type, T-I-N-K-E-R-C-A-D.com. If you have a browser in front of you right now, or even on your phone, you can check it out. If not, you can just watch this video. Uh, you can do this later on your own. I don't worry about learning stuff right now, because I'm going to show you in, in great details where you will learn uh, this place. But anyway, for now, it's thinkcard.com. Once you're in, you can just join now, which is going to create a new account. It's for free. But because I already uh, have an account, so I'm just gonna go in with my account. So um, after you join in, after you log in, or you basically join or create a new account, you will come to this page right here. Now, what I want you, of course, by the way, this, this place is actually from the creators of AutoCAD, and you can actually learn AutoCAD for free here. You can also learn, learn code blocks, but more importantly, and what I actually want you to use is circuit. And circuits actually is, uh, by the way, notice the Bahasa, yeah? Because some of it are actually in Bahasa. So what I want you to do is create, create new circuit. And it might take some time to run because I'm running at several things at the same time right now. And then uh, this is actually is your virtual space. This is where you can actually uh, create your Arduino-based project. And um, unfortunately, this an area here, only allows you to work with Arduino and very limited control. Uh, the, only, uh, uh, the only controller you can work with is Arduino. And you know what, let's not do that. If you wanna to go to basic or all, you can get all the options, but if you go to Arduino from here, just click on components and select Arduino, you are gonna get uh, a, what is called a, a free or ready-made project, Arduino project. So you can actually select any of those and then drag it to the, to the area here. Uh, don't worry about if you missed something. I will show you later or in a while where you learn in, in detail. And more importantly is, if you can uncode, you will see the actual program running this semester, uh, running this uh, project. This code is actually, let me, uh, yeah. So this program was actually written for this one. It allows this, this LED light to blink. And if you want to run it, just run the simulation. And here you go, it's already blinking. And if you want to actually, uh, change the behavior of this guy. You can come inside and recode it. Make this delay time a little bit shorter. And then start simulation again. It will blink faster. I, think I didn't save the file. Yeah, I did. Well, actually, it automatically saves. What I want you to see here in this very short briefing is that this is your virtual lab. And this is where um, you're going to have to switch your FYP project. Rather than um, the reason why, once again, for the, for those who just joined us, because the university, because of the COVID-19, we're switching back to virtual labs. 
uh, at least me, I'm, I'm switching back to virtual lab. You, are, you will not be able to continue to open your project physically. Unfortunately, and also um, because of the COVID-19, you know, from now all the way until the end of semester two. Now, okay, so how do you come here? Tinkercraft.com, log in and create an account, and you're here. How do you learn it? And also, how do you learn Arduino or, or C++ or Python or whatever? You can come to my own YouTube channel. And uh, basically, uh, I can show you the link, or you can just uh, look for my YouTube channel, which is, let me just go and find it for you. Yeah, right here. You can actually go to, yeah, this one right here. And uh, up here. Um, I'm actually uh, in this page uh, because of the COVID 19 YouTube, uh, back forward slash Simon Hadjaj 287 or 287. This is my channel. And in the channel, once you're here, so once again, yeah, Sami Hajjaj 287. This is my uh, yeah, channel, yeah. Once you're here, you can come come to playlists and come to my class ENM or MESB 403. Some of you already Okay. Some of you already subscribed. But anyway, uh, thanks. Now you come, you need to come to this channel right here, uh, this playlist. This is actually for my ENM class. Unfortunately for you guys, you may have taken the older version of this course, uh, the new version of this course I teach. And basically it's Ros Arduino, Raspberry Pi, and IoT. Uh, after the MCO, we only focusing on virtual lab and Arduino. So if I'm going through then, and also these videos are actually my lectures on this session. And that includes the basics of C++, um, again, Python, and Arduino, uh, and then here. And uh, basically in this uh, tutorial, yeah, in, the, in this video, actually, I walk you through the process of using Tinkercad. So it's basically a hands-on tutorial, really, into how to use Tinkercad, how to build. Basically, this is a tutorial, so I basically, uh, come here, build a circuit, write a program, and run the simulation. And I do this several times for three different tutorials or projects. You know what I mean? And therefore, you can then watch these videos and learn how to use Tinkercad for your project. You can also, if you want, keep going and work with Arduino sensors, Arduino sensors part two and three, then simulated IoT. This is optional because your project may or may not involve IoT, but you may not you, do, you may not care about this part, which is the last three videos here, because it's simulated IoT projects. You know what I mean? But the ones you should care about is what it says Arduino. So basically starting from all the way from Arduino introduction, which is this guy right here, all the way until uh, this guy right here. This is where I go through the basics of Arduino, the basics of the language, as well as the hardware as well as working with take a card and how do you work in a, in a virtual environment. By the time you finish these videos, you will be ready to actually come to take a card and develop a virtual project yourself. Then here, if you can take a look at it, you will see that you have access to sensors, actuators, input devices, and whatever you really want. You know what I mean? And of course, the Arduino board and the breadboard and so on and so forth. So at the end of the day, whatever project you would like to make in the end will be whatever you want. It will be something actually similar to those guys right here. Now, the, the degree of advancements of these projects are quite, actually, if you want to learn from those ready-made projects, by all means, this is the blinking program. And actually, this is also tutorial 6.1. This is the fade program. This is the, the, the state charge detection and so on and so forth. Different, and this is also contains a servo or a motor. Right, you just have to drag it in, and then you will see the the other circuit here. Uh, this one, if you start running the program, the thing will turn uh, 45 degrees, and so on and so forth. So what I mean is that by going through Tinker Card and going through these videos, you will have the, all the training that you'll need to know how to use Tinker Card and create a virtual project. What you have left to do is to go to your own title and modify it to fit this new environment. So once again, what's going on is because of the complications of the COVID-19, uh, university has reversed its decision. Originally, we had plans to go back to the labs 
and go back to you know to workshops and do your work or develop your work uh, with the actual project, right? Or actual models. But because of the COVID-19 and the, and the skyrocketing numbers, we're going to have to switch to virtual projects. So your title will now have to fit or to be available within the ticket card environment. Uh, if your title can already do that or it's similar or related or can be simulated, then by all means continue here. If it's not, you may have to slightly change your title to fit this environment, plus try to reuse some of the content that you already developed, like chapter one and literature review and so on. If you're, um, how do I say this, unfortunate situation where you cannot use whatever content you have, then you may have to start um, again by rewriting chapter one and the literature review to compensate for this. I know this is unfortunate that we, you may have to start over or you may have to redo some of the work you've already done, but look at the bright side. You don't have to build an actual project. You, are, you can work with this environment where everything is already there, uh, including, um, including uh, ready-made projects or something like that. So definitely it's, uh, it's a setback, but it's worth the effort. And also we are only halfway through semester one. So, you haven't yet really completed much of the project, um, including, um, I mean, still have uh, the rest of semester one and then the break and then semester two. Plenty of time to catch up and plenty of time to develop your virtual project. Now, in the future, let's say, right, hypothetically speaking, that in the middle of semester two, the COVID-19 situation has uh, relaxed and we're back to actual projects. You will not be required to go back to, to actual projects. You will allow or you will be allowed to continue with your virtual project until the end. Even, let's assume, right, even if, let's say, next month they find the vaccines, COVID is over, and we, we can go back to life normal, but you're still allowed to continue with the virtual. Okay, that's it. I'm done. Any questions? Uh, sir, how does this affect our presentation? Okay, the previous reports that you have submitted, they will not be affected you will be marked according to the work that you've already completed. So PR1 and PR2 will be marked based on whatever you submitted and the title at that time. Now, for your presentation, um, you may have to make some changes to your title and also changes to your proposed methodology and also maybe even fundamental changes, like you may have to change the plan, change the title, and so on and so forth. Now, when you come to the presentation, you may not have enough time to make those changes. So you may have to make some partial changes. It's okay, we will understand that. You just have to inform us. Uh, here's the plan, I'm gonna change from this title to this title as per requirement from the faculty. Unfortunately, I was able to do only this change, but I'm working on the rest of the stuff. For example, you can say that I already did chapter one, I, I mean, I wrote, rewrote chapter one, but then I'm still doing my literature review again or add more literature review to it. So uh, we will recognize this and then we will uh, allow it to happen. And then after that, by the time semester two starts, you will already be back online or back caught up and then you will be ready to continue with the new title. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Understood. Any other questions? Uh, sir, regarding the environment, the tinker card, right? So yes. basically, can it enable the? I mean, like mine is solar, so I want to try the to the solar, and then can I put this Arduino in an environment with a uh, sun moving? You may have to. Uh, I understand your question. You may have to find a way to simulate the solar environment. Like for example, when there is a solar uh, changes, right? Uh. Usually we expect some heat or some temperature, okay. is that right? So then you can add a temperature sensor and then and simulate the changes in temperature to include that. You know what I mean? Uh, temperature sensor actually does or is available here. So you can actually go and figure, uh, can find it. Yeah, temperature sensor right here. You can also try to simulate the changes in energy um, in a different way. Um, maybe um, try to find one of those input sensors that can catch or can, for example, uh, the, the photo resistant sensor, uh, the, 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 the light in, in, uh, ambience or the light intensity, right? 
that can also be used, or even the photoresistor. You may want to read about those sensors and see how they could be used to capture uh, illumination, okay, and uh, solar ray strength, something like that. Those factors can then be used to represent the amount of energy indirectly, uh, the amount of solar energy. Because solar energy can be represented in the form of, you know, amount of how much illumination, how much heat, and how much uh, other factors as well that are actually coming from the solar panel. Then you can represent those indirectly using those photoresistors or photodiode or the ambient line sensor plus the, uh, maybe infrared as well, and, and so on and so forth. What I mean is that you, need, you may need to do a little bit of reading about how can you simulate um, the solar energy or the solar power, and then you can try and use the sensors that are available here in TIFCAD to represent that. Okay, sir. So the next question is, can we integrate with this uh, simulation to the third-party apps? For, uh, for example, Amazon Web Services, AWS, or I'm just in sure. this environment? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I'll leave oh, that okay. for you as an exercise. If you already... If you're already familiar with another environment, let's say they also provide, or indeed another environment that you want to work on it completely, maybe a ticket card here is just a suggestion, by the way. If you prefer another environment that you are probably familiar, already familiar with, by all means, go ahead. Uh, ticket card is not a compulsory. The reason why I made or I mentioned ticket card because I already provided videos on them, hands-on tutorials. So I could not give you or ask you to do work with an environment without providing you with some, some form of a training. But if you prefer to work on another environment that has other features or better features, or you are comfortable with that environment, by all means, go ahead. Uh, okay, so, so basically, uh, my project is, from my understanding, is consists of two systems. So the first one is the solar tracking, and the other one is uh, the IoT, which is the network okay. chain, so on. Yeah. So for my project, Am I will can change the project from building both system or just focusing to the real time monitoring only? You can uh, because of the fact that oh uh, yeah, this is one problem that ticket card does not have. We cannot we cannot work with IoT here, unfortunately. Uh, therefore, what you can do for IoT, if you wish, to create a simulated IoT system. Um, again, uh, the videos for that are available here. How do you work with a simulated IoT system? You, could, you have to write uh, the Python program that publishes the data, but then rather than capturing actual sensor data or actual values, you may have to uh, write those simulated values, like, a, like a sort of fake values. But then when you receive the information and you view it to the user, you will use a, a, an actual IoT client. Again, the videos here, look at the time of these videos. It's one hour and each. That's how extensive they are in teaching you the, the principles of IoT using Python. You know I mean? Now, yeah, I give you two options. Um, who is asking? Yeah, Ashraf, right? I give you two options, Ashraf. If you want, you can either drop the IoT part altogether and focus on the solar tracking. Therefore, you can use the part only. Uh, the option two, and recommended option two, is that you, you will do, do the two parts of this project separately. The solar part, you do it in ticket card, and then the virtual IoT, you do it by using um, Python plus a free, word, free board. And um, those are available, or you can learn those in the same chapter or the same uh, playlist, but in the last two parts right here. The Internet of Things, um, this is the video again, broadcasting data to the cloud, and then the part two, which is receiving and viewing data in IoT flight. You know I mean? So I walk you through the process, and I, uh, in the first video, I write the program from scratch, basically, into how to work with. And by the way, before you start this video, it's recommended you go through this video, which is working with lists in Python, because we use lists when we package the data for IoT. So yeah, so if you watch these three videos, then you're ready, basically. So that means actually, um, basically, from here all the way until the end of the list, that will make you comfortable to work with ticket card as well as simulated IoT system. So what you can do is, um, Ashraf, is that you can use the Arduino and ticket card for the solar part, and then you can then use the simulated IoT system for the, the IoT tracking or the IoT monitoring. 
Okay, so got it. I know, so, I know it's, uh, <laughs> it's a lot of confusion right now, and you might feel vague uh, about the whole situation. But trust me, if you go through the videos, it will be clear to you to how you're going to develop or how you're going to work on this project. And I suggest, all of you guys actually, I suggest that you go through the videos first. Because once you watch these videos and you learn the concepts, it will be easier for you to adjust your title or switch your title to this new environment. Right now, it seems very vague and seems uh, dark and therefore scary and confusing. It's normal because it's a new environment. Go through these videos and watch them and at least watch them um, just to follow up, capture what's going on. And then it will make sense to you. How do you make this transition? Okay, so this is the solution for my problem is I have to do separate system without integrating both two, right? Yeah, what you, what you can do is if you want to make it sort of semi-integrated is that whatever data that you captured from the, from the ticket plant project, you could actually record that data in an Excel file or somewhere, oh. right? And then you yourself take the same data and then feed it into the Python program. And, or you can allow the Python program to read the data from the Excel file. This way you can link these two projects together. That's doable. That's actually possible. Okay, got it, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? No, sir. Uh, once again, I understand. Um, is right? Questions? No, no, I don't have. Okay, so once again, I understand the confusion, but uh, I suggest once again that you go through, spend some time, maybe one week, to go through Tinkercad and go through the videos. Just don't worry about title or changes or whatever. Go through the title and go through the videos and go through Tinkercad, and hopefully, once you understand the class, how things work, then you will have a clear idea of how to adjust your title to fit this new environment. You get me? Uh, this is what I recommend you guys do. Now, after you do that, let's say you watch the videos and you learn what's going on in them, but you're still confused, then you can contact me. We can talk about it more. But I suggest that you do not contact me unless you already watched the videos and learned the topics, because uh, it will be much, much easier to handle the discussion once you've already learned these basic elements. You know what I mean? And then we, like for example, just now me and Ashraf, we discussed how to link between the IoT plus the, 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 the you know, the solar part. And um, you have to first have that basic understanding of um, the Tikkakar, the Arduino, and, and, and IoT in general, right? Once you have developed that understanding, then it's easier for me to explain to you how to can make the switch for your project. Okay. Okay. Okay, so if there is no more questions, I think this is it, about 30 minutes. Yeah, it's exactly 30 minutes. And the video is available. I'll share the link to this video for those who missed it. And you can come to the Teams page, our Teams page, and you can rewatch this. It gets you prepared for you without anything. Once again, thank you very much, guys, and I'll catch up with you later. Thank you. You're all welcome.